This week in our thoughts for the day, we're continuing to consider the armour of God as set out in Ephesians chapter 6. So far, we've looked at the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, and feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Today, we are considering the shield of faith. Paul writes, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. In antiquity, battles frequently commenced with archers firing volleys of arrows at the defenders, frequently using arrows soaked in pitch and then set alight. Soldiers needed to stand firm and not run. And a Roman shield was designed to fully protect a crouching soldier from an attack by archers. It was four feet tall and about two and a half feet wide. It was covered, covered in leather, which could be soaked with water to extinguish any fire arrows. Thus protected, the soldiers could stand firm confidently withholding the onslaughts of the enemy. Paul sees faith as our shield, protecting us against attacks by the devil. And the devil will indeed try to attack. He will use trouble, hardship and persecution to attack us. He will try to tempt us into sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. And faith is our defence. In Hebrews chapter 11, we're told that faith is confidence in what we hope for an assurance about what we do not see. And the rest of the chapter provides many examples from the Old Testament of those who are commended for their faith. We are saved through faith in Jesus. We fight the good fight of faith. We have the victory through faith. John in his first letter says, this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. And not only is our faith our shield against the attacks of the devil, but we have confidence that God stands with us. We do not fight the battle alone. In Psalm 91, it says, He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. This promise is repeated again in uh, 2 Thessalonians, where Paul writes, but the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. We can therefore be confident that we can stand firm against the, the attacks of the devil. We can be confident that through faith in our Lord Jesus, we have overcome sin and death, and we, have, we can look forward to his promise of eternal life. I'd like to finish by reading from the conclusion of Romans chapter 8, which sets out the basis of our faith. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you are our shield and rampart. We thank you that by through faith in our Lord Jesus, we can stand firm and secure against all the attacks of the devil. And Lord, we pray that you will strengthen our faith so that we can indeed stand firm and secure. Amen.